actually, believe it or not, when I met these guys last time in Sioux Polos, this is from Mitch, and this is for Phil. And for you, there were, remember a time, no camera time for me, huh? Ashtray Museum. I miss the old New York City bars. The smoky, hazy holes. Those things you couldn't even peer in through the door. People talked to each other. They weren't good environments, but you know, you could walk in there and have a core or a cross between a vacuum cleaner and a chainsaw that couldn't make an indentation, but everyone understood each other to some degree. The only distraction was this thing called television over in the corner, usually with the sound turned down and the jukebox turned up, but nobody sat by themselves staring into these strange little electronic devices <laughs> tuning everybody's fucking ass out. <laughs> now everything in here has been sanitized. Everything is gone. A victim sacrificed to a better environment, a safer workplace, free of secondhand smoke, so that all the hand-me-down people with derivative identities can feel better about themselves. And they feel safer and more in control, clinging to the illusion of the elimination of a little fucking smoke in the air is magically going to clear up the unanswered questions about the nature of their precious mortality and the daily crapshoot risk of navigating a mystery, a messy existence of ours. Never even broaching the question if they're so goddamn concerned about being healthy and happy with their lives, why are they in this bar poisoning their ass with booze in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking angry, pal. Don't even start. All right, all right, all right. Keep it moving along. It's been a long night. I don't care if you're fucking Ezra Pound up here. After a couple hours, the shit gets old. Okay. All right. Easy, you'll get it. The proposition. She kept asking me. She kept asking me, when are you going down to New York again? When are you going down to New York again? Can I go with you? And I say, look. You can come to me anytime you want, and then I wouldn't hear anything. I wouldn't hear back anything. This went on most of the spring, until I ran into someplace. He says, when are you going to New York again? What are your poetry? And when are you going down again? And I said, look, I looked her straight in the eyeballs and said, look, you've been told that you can come down to New York with me, and you're welcome anytime you want. I think you're worried I want a relationship or something. I don't. I want to fuck your doors off like a porn star till you start screaming and squirt like a fountain. So don't even consider going to New York if you don't intend to get blind drunk and buck naked and hear some good poetry from what's left of some good poets. She slapped me so hard <laughs> across the face as a sister of mercy in the sixth grade in Catholic school. And I rubbed my stinging jaws and she stormed away and dingly and calling after, is that a yes or a no? <laughs> I take it it was a no. <laughs> I don't know yet. I never got back to it. I'm still waiting. <laughs> One short poem, that's all. Dinosaurs. She said, you know, man, we're becoming like dinosaurs. Thinking this over in response, he asked, well, what kind of dinosaur would you be? And I said, me? I want to go with a paradactyl. Now, actually, there isn't a dinosaur called the paradactyl. It's another unpronounceable name I can't think of. Anyway. I mean, if you get a load of that pecker that he had for a head on both sides, too, I'm going with that. How about you? <laughs> Uh, shit. Uh, here you go. Here's one for the old timers. No future for you. 
Richard Hell and the Voidoids used to sing about no future for you. But that was years ago and the future came and went. So these days it's like no more attention span for you. <laughs> or even the memory of that song sung by a man who boasted he was eating a sandwich and getting a blowjob. Only to admit later he wasn't really eating a sandwich. <laughs> Just one or two more, like I said, I'm a short fucking study. Besides, I want to drink more and smoke cigarettes. Go <laughs> okay, let's talk gratitude. This is anatomically and history correct. This is what you get for watching the History Channel. Do you remember those brave musicians who defiantly continued to play music with their instruments on the deck of the Titanic that was certainly on the way down into the icy water taking 1,500 passengers to their death? Afterwards, they were honored by people all over the world for their bravery and guts, while the White Star Line, their employer, sent the surviving musicians and the next of kin bills for their uniforms that were lost they were wearing as they drowned. Mm. You can look it up. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I learned this summer. All right, one last one. I've been dying to read this one. I haven't even met you, but I've, it, this is came. In fact, it was after one of your emails. Um, <laughs> the pixelated penis poet. It's fucking us all, but damn good. No attention span, no memory, a real fear of being alone inside our own skulls, a pulverized perforated, compromised stream of consciousness, ejaculated blank stares of self-absorption and immediate gratification. Just then, a member of the audience, way in the back, sitting of the room, grabbed his head with both hands in that munch scream and said, oh Christ, no, don't, don't do this to us. Do we have to listen to the pixelized penis poet again. What marvelous images he invokes. You know, right now all I can think about is Japanese porn, where they're always pixelizing some boner or pussy mixed up with this stray dog I saw when I was six. And he had this pink heart on. And I asked my sister what was wrong with that dog anyway, and she sneered, you stupid son of a bitch. That's what he looks like when he has a big idea about something. <laughs> Bingo. Never fully understood exactly what was meant by that until now. I just knew this guy up in front of the room, and that stray dog had so much in common. Guess he had a point after all. He's just another pixelized penis poet. But at least the stray dog had a big idea. <laughs> <laughs>